Ding. Ding. All right, we're back. We're back. For yeah, another yeah. episode, Bikes and Brews. And I'm Carl Heinemann, and this is RJ, which stands for? Raging Jackhammer. That's right. And we have... Ryan, who can't spell his name. Beechner. Yep. And we're back. And we're gonna, we're gonna start with beers. Well, we start our episodes that way with That's these it. beers. And we have a, another classic that um, I think a lot of people that do beer reviews, they always start with the local, like you know, small craft brewery. Let's do a mainstream one. You know, we don't do that very it's often. It's the opposite of that. Yes. <laughs> Stella, which most people have heard of at this point. I don't know if I've ever seen like a Stella review of just like straight up taste. I can't see. It. You for sure. I know you stay up till two o'clock in the morning thinking about this one. I'm more of a beer history guy. Oh, Okay, let's. I to want to hear some history about the Stella. Stella. I want to know about the history. Okay, <laughs> Stella. It is a Belgian beer, right? It is indeed. Okay, let's from Louvain, Belgium. Me about, okay, from sometime. I want to hear the history about this. Now, what's interesting is they say it was uh, founded in 1366. Although that is correct, the uh, the Artois family did not actually take control of it until nearly 300 years later in the 1700s. Uh, fun fact, in the UK, Stella Artois mired in controversy because it is slightly connected. Please um, do tell. I want to hear this. Yes. With uh, spousal abuse. Wow. Yeah. So as you take a big old swig of that, let me know how much it makes you want to beat your significant other. I'm going to beat the, I'm gonna beat the audience with this. See if I can get the audience right here. Oh, well, that was close. That was impressive. That, that almost got expensive. Yeah. I think there's a UV filter on there, I hope. <laughs> yeah, you do. I think that went right in. Just above it. Skipped off the top. Oh, I got a small taster here. It's fine. You, oh. got, you can have the part that I alcohol. inevitably don't drink. Let's talk about alcohol first. Let's take a guess. I'm With this say... 600 years of brewing history, what do you think this thing is? Three and a half. No, you're talking like Utah beer. 5.7. <laughs> Utah beer? Yeah. You know uh, those lower alcohol beers that they sell at the, the grocery store in like places like Utah? Is there a loophole for that in Utah? Yeah, you go to a state-run liquor yeah. store. Oh, got it. Yeah. Let's they, go five. They call it 3.2 beer because uh. it can't be higher than 3.2%. Oh, there's been That's issues. Right. Yeah, there's there's kombucha Ding. kombucha companies who have issues with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. I did not know that. Okay, so you said five point seven. And he said that. That's the most words I've heard him say in a half hour stint. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. I'm going. Five. I'm going five and hoping the Price is Right rules get me on that one. Ding ding ding. Five <laughs> percent by volume. Oh, okay. Cool. So this isn't a high alcohol beer, but it's got a little bit of bite. Got some bubbles. Pretty, pretty mm-hmm. standard. Colors, pretty typical. Smells a little skunky. Is it me? It's a Belgian beer, not a Dutch Belgian, beer. Yeah. Well, it's in a green bottle. So chances are, depending on where this was brewed, it might be starting to naturally. Where was this brewed? Best before date. I mean, I know this is originally from from uh, Belgium, but was it actually brewed in Belgium? It expired. Oh, brewed in the United States under yeah. the strict supervision of the brewmaster. Yeah, they're owned by InBev. Okay. <laughs> okay. What is the best buy date here? I can't. I don't think a fermented product really goes bad quickly. March twenty-five. So, Still good. beer mm-hmm. does go bad, especially uh, exposed to UV light. Well, so, is that why they use tinted glass bottles? Ding, ding, ding. And actually, the best bottles for UV is brown. brown. Yeah, it's got the most filtration. And then green. And then, so whenever you see green or mm-hmm. like clear, it'll usually be a cardboard encased one to protect mm-hmm. it from light. For transport. But for this one, I smell a little bit of scum. Maybe I'm just imagining it. Is this because it's been on your porch? It's very subtle. Years? It could be. This is like two months old. Yeah, but it's on like, the porch. It's like cool. It's a cool tower chiller. So that is a dark place. Doesn't taste good. It doesn't. No, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of this one. I can't really tell you the difference to the last one. 
Oh, f you know what? Okay, that's that's an argument right there. Okay, it is. Yes. <laughs> is what it is this also? A this logger? is also a logger, premium oh. logger. Sorry. Oh my bad. I wasn't not a logger, a premium. logger. I wasn't logger. aware we were doing the luxury product here. <laughs> What's that say? <laughs> that is a deluxe beer. <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna try and speak you can, Flemish. You can, yeah, okay, try to speak Flemish. No, thank you. Okay. All right. <coughs> Whoa. Okay, I was. <laughs> oh, My right name is mic. not Wow. Right in the mic. Sorry, <laughs> folks. Um, I'm not excited about the smell. Palate cleanser. It is strong. It it smells kind of. I wouldn't say turn like skunky where bear goes bad. Like I can't say it is that. But I don't get any kind of citrus. I don't get anything like. Mm. That's kind of like gets me excited. I'm kind of like this and like kind of. Smells like alcohol. This is the campy of beers. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it there's just nothing right with it i think you're giving it a little bit too much credit that's fine i don't, I don't know shit about beer okay um it is the star of christmas apparently it is the bubbles are okay the head's pretty ordinary i mean for a logger it's probably pretty standard mm -hmm. was it the was it the 1800s when they brought it back from the the artois brewery as the stella monks. as a christmas brew for the people of leuven in belgium Check the Wikipedia page. I bet it is. Do you think Remco Evenpool drinks a lot of these? Uh, didn't they just have the Gravel Worlds finish in Leuven? Did anybody watch it? I saw the highlights. You did more than me. Yeah. <laughs> Plot twist. Matthew Vanderpool won. Ooh. <laughs> that's unexpected. I know. Spoiler alert. Okay. All right. RJ. Jackhammer. Yes. One to ten. I'm thinking about a six on this one, about even with the last beer. I'm going to give this a five. So yeah, you gave it a what, I'm sorry, a five, and I gave it a five? I think I said six. six. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, you did say six. You said six. I was thinking five in the back of my mind. So that's low bar for me, and you're giving it a what? Whatever I gave the last one, this is just a higher credit score version of the other one. Like if the other one is a high school party beer, this is like a you're going to a you're going to a college re or a high school reunion and you want to look slightly classier than when you used to drink the other one, <laughs> but it's the same <laughs> shit. This one's in a glass bottle, so you must be fancy. So instead of Pabst Blue Ribbon, correct, you've got a green bottle and you think you look more sophisticated. Yeah, and it's, it's vaguely European. You know what? I had a Pabst Blue Ribbon recently, and I was impressed. I was expecting to go in low ball big time and be bummed out, and I was like. Okay, I guess I was surprised that it wasn't very bad. <laughs> and this is right there with it. Like yeah. if you blindfolded me, I'd be like, I don't know which one's better. Except this one you just paid a lot more money for. Yeah, it's the bottle. Yeah, yeah you're paying for the bottle. So anyways, let's segue from that into tires. Road bike road tires. Road bike tires. You know, because in Belgium they ride some pretty nasty roads. We just yeah. had an argument for the last 30 minutes off camera about road bike tires. So, yes. uh, we're Rolling gonna resistance. We're going to talk about current road bike tires versus yeah. old school tires and racing and recreational riding and training riding and all that kind of stuff. Which is, an, we're in an interesting era right now. Because I think for like a hundred years, like it was... Gosh, the, you know, you were talking like there were some new models that came out, but it was like anywhere from 18, I think it was a standard for a while, mm -hmm. for a long time. I think my first bike was 21s. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you were born like two weeks ago. Correct. Totally. Pump up the 120 PSI. I ran 120 PSI <laughs> until about 10 years ago. Yeah, I ran 100. And that might even be a little bit generous. What's the highest PSI you ever rode? Didn't you do some track stuff? I did some track stuff. Don't they go to like 160? I don't think I rode 160 though. Okay. Because I rode, I think I rode clinchers on the velodrome when I did it. Pussy. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> I never got super into, uh, I never claimed to be super into riding velodrome. I, I just claim I rode the velodrome. Okay. But I did rock them out. For, and it was like 120, 130, I think. Oh, 150 yeah. for me. Ooh. You rode 150? RJ's a little bigger boy. Yeah. Well, that, back then, everybody did. They rode like 160 on the wood. Yeah. They were rocked. 
Well, speaking with, because a lot of times when you're racing then too, even on the velodrome, I think, you rode tubulars. Mm -hmm. For you guys who are just getting into cycling, you might not even be aware that tubulars existed, which for the last, up until just a few years ago, all pros, all racing, even I rode a lot of racing, I rode a, a dedicated set of tubulars for racing. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, if you never heard of tubulars, don't get it confused with tubular or tubeless, tubeless. sorry. Tubeless. I'm confusing myself. Um, it's, like a, like it's like a, a shallow dished rim. If you're looking at it from like straight on the rim, here's the rim, here's the dish. It's And then you glue cemented, the yeah. cement. You actually glued the tire to the rim. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, just checking. Because you were born yesterday, remember? Mastic is what that's called. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like walls that were a clinch. You had a bead here, and then here's your tire and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with an inner tube on the inside. Yeah, it's like I wrote two well, there, with a tread on the outside. I'll say, but there is an inner tube. It's yeah. just sewn into the tire. Inside, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's a lot of people call them sew ups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there were a lot of times it was actually a, a cloth based tire on the mm -hmm. inner part or whatever. So, yeah. Sometimes. Silk, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did say that. I heard him say something. Did you hear him say something? Must Shut the been, fuck up, must RJ. Been wind. <laughs> Anyways, but nowadays it's 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 interesting because everybody's going to clinchers, which I didn't think they put up such a resistance for so long. I think the aerodynamics and everything is finally taking over to the point where there's no justification for two. But before it was like weight, because there's a huge difference between clinchers and sew ups. But mm -hmm. I feel like the progression the the progression has gone. If you take professional racing out of it, mm -hmm. everything went to clinchers and stayed clinchers until tubeless started increasing in viability recently. Okay. But pros have now adopted some clinchers and some tubeless, and it just kind of depends on the team what they like or don't like. What do you think the major reason to switch is? For racing or for just... For racing. Normal. Let's start with racing. Uh, so... Because they don't really rolling, care about convenience. Rolling, rolling resistance for uh, um, when you remove the tube whether you have a tubular or a, you know, a tubed clincher, whenever you remove the tube out of it, you remove a source of friction between the actual carcass of the tire itself and mm -hmm. the inner liner. So you're gonna end up with a lower rolling resistance on the tubeless tires. But, okay, so you're saying a tubeless tire is the same amount of resistance as a tubular? Or faster, less? Faster, modern, faster. I don't know if that's true, is that true? Yes. Yes. There's no friction. Even in a tubular, there's friction. Yeah. Yeah, but a tubular doesn't have an inner tube in it. It does. It does. It's sewn in. It's in. As you but it doesn't, it doesn't tube. move with friction, though. Yeah. Like it having it an independent one. Does it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does. It's not glued into it. It's just inside of it. It's sewn yeah. into it. I thought it was all one piece, though. Well, it's... If, it's... You, have, if you ever patched, patched a tubular, no. it's loose. <laughs> so you cut it. I've I mean, never patched one, oh, to be yeah. honest, so, so I, I don't know. I don't know why you would. Yeah. I always thought it was one piece, no. and, and so it was just like a big to, tube that was within itself. So, so if, it, you were, if you were to patch one on the road, you would literally cut it, so patch it. it, sew it back up on the road. You get a oh, it. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I learn something new every day. Yeah. Okay. But, and, the, and the difference between... So remember how there was always pro-only tires from Continental? Yes. Which were always badged as Continental uh, Pro Limited. The difference between the consumer tires and those Pro Limited was the Pro tires had a latex inner tube, which has uh, less resistance. Less, ro less rolling resistance. Yeah. That's why they're selling latex inner tubes now yeah. and all that. And less res that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Okay. But why hasn't everybody got... Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of all three systems because... Oh, this is easy. Okay. So, <laughs> so, with tubular, so with tubulars, if you get a flat and you don't have a team car, you're just fucked on the side of the road. Okay. Well, not totally. Okay. So you're we'll, going to we'll take one on of your bottles. You're going to cut the top No, 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 no. I know, I know, guys, I know guys that have done this, and I actually yeah. know a couple of friends. They actually just peel the tire off, put another one on it, get enough pressure on it to ride it home. Mm hmm you're not doing a big ride and you're not cornering on it and everything, but it, it, you no. know, you're putting air in it, so it's on there. It's not really glued, it's kind of have some residue. A little glue. interference. And, yeah. and there's a little tape. bit of cup to keep it in place and you just ride straight and 
You, you know, try not to lean and yeah, yeah. So it doesn't roll off the beam. You have a clincher, but it's not your tire. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, but but for convenience, I get that totally. I think forty years ago, people were riding clinchers because it's not ridiculous to think that you could ride tubulars every day. Yeah, no, and, and with clinchers, even over tubeless, there's a level of convenience of if you have if you have clinchers, you get a flat. It's not hard to change. No. It's, yeah. I think we get up. We we stop enough on our group rides where we fix. I think we timed it a couple of times, and it's pretty fast. Yeah. So if it's, you're moving, it's less than five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, you're moving. Yeah. If you if you've if you've practiced it at all, less than five minutes. If you're doing a tube into a failed tubeless, then you're going to add a little bit of mess from the sealant that's everywhere. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I don't run there's another convenience thing. I cannot stand. I don't see the benefits outweighing because of the convenience of, of you get a hole in a tubeless tire. Mm-hmm. It's a mess. Mm-hmm. Changing on the side of the road and dealing with it, you're still having to carry a tube. So the, Okay, so the argument on tubeless is that you should get less. Right, and it'll seal the whole it'll bit. it'll seal and all that. I run it on my mountain bike. I get that part yep. of it. But I, I just, I don't think the difference between a tubeless and a, clincher is enough i'm i'm on tubed tires clinchers yeah i'm not on tubeless you know no and i think for the size of tires you run it doesn't make sense to run tubeless anyhow right yeah right yeah no no volume yeah um but with tubeless i've had really good luck with it do you run tubeless all the time pretty much Mm. i do you no I ride I ride tubeless <laughs> until I get a flat that won't seal. Then I'll stuff a tube in it. Mm-hmm. And have then you plugged it yet? You have I haven't seen you plug one yet. Yeah, I've plugged one. I, uh, I plug it always with success. Yeah, I've I've plugged. You have way more pages and everything than I do. Like he's seen me do it quite mm-hmm. a few times. Mm-hmm. Argue seen me do it plenty of times and never had to put a tube in. And yeah, I, and, and I still ride it. <laughs> I still ride that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no. Once the tire is plugged, it doesn't it doesn't yeah. help. One way or the other. Right. The dyno plugs right. were great. Uh, yeah, I agree with all that stuff. I, I, I guess on mountain, there has been times when I've had a big enough cut for one. You still put a tube in it. Or it's just such a mess. And I'm sorry, that sealant stuff, if you get it on your clothes at all. It'll be sticky for weeks. Well, it, it never comes out. You can throw your your clothing through the washing. It's in your clothes. Your clothes are ruined. You need to use alcohol on whatever they touch. Can you get it out? Mm-hmm. Oh. But once it's in there, it's in there. Yeah. So if you wet it completely Wait a minute. dry. You just contradicted yourself. Well, you can get it out, but eventually it'll stain. It's like blood. Does that make sense to you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Are you following my line of thinking right now? Once it's in there, it's in there for good. It's not coming out. But you can get alcohol. You can get it out. Yes. Soon enough. But it'll stain. <laughs> so it's not out. <laughs> I've I've gotten it out of plenty of clothes because I. But it stains. Okay, so I wear almost exclusively black. What? And so I have so it's not situation. completely out, but it's enough for government inspection. It's out enough. <laughs> no, there's there's <laughs> right. You see what I'm going? Got sealant on that you would never be able to find it, and I can't. I'm not going to try to find it in your crotch. That's fine. I don't have sealant in my crotch. I wouldn't know. It would just be the shirt. Okay. All right. Cheers to that, by the way. Great. <laughs> Drink some more. RJ? Cheers. All right. So let's talk about your quickly, quickly tell me about your setup and why. Okay. Uh, and what tire do you choose? Like what, what, what brand and tire do you choose? So, okay. So wheels I run in NV, NV four or fives. Okay, which are pretty wide. Yes, 25 mil internal. I think they're 31 or 32 wide external. Okay. I run, I've run a bunch of different ones. I've run Envy's own tire, which RJ is running right now and he likes. Are you pretty happy or are you still exploring and always kind of experimenting with your tire and rim and all that setup? I'm pretty happy. Right now I'm running Envy 4 or 5 uh, wheels and I've had those for a number of years now. And then on those, I've got uh, GP 5000s. I've got a new front tire that I just ordered, which is that Aero 111 thing that they launched at the Tour de France. Mm. 
and I have no idea what to expect from it. Apparently it's supposed to have more grip and roll a little faster and be better in crosswind, but I, I'll be honest, I just needed new tires. Okay. What about you? I have NV uh, tires, 29 oh. and 31. Uh, TPU tubes from Wrench Science, and I have... Oh, you went in deep. <laughs> I have two, two sets of wheels. Uh, <laughs> NV34 and uh, DT Swiss. Um, I think it's 56 depth. I'm not sure what the... Arc 1100s, hmm. or I think they are. Yeah, they came with the my Canyon. And I'm running uh, Vittoria Corsa's uh clinchers with the tan sidewall um in 25s are you still on the chinese wheels yes i'm running wind space um oh the hypers yeah the hypers um i really like them um they're not really that wide i would like to go wider but at the time when they came out they were the wider ones yeah. that they made and now they're probably 21s they're i think they're 23 or 21 internal yeah so they were kind of like medium width at the time. Because I think the ones they <clears throat> just came out with are the 23s now. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. And um, and that's about as wide as I can go for my bike anyways, because, you know, being the rim brake bike, yeah. like Colago. And um, so, yeah, it works pretty good. I, I find those tires, I really like the feel of them. And I recently have been trying, I, I don't have a lot of experience with it, with the, um, the TPU inner tubes. I made the mistake though. I got some really cheap ones to start off, like the really <laughs> cheap ones, Alibaba. and they were horrible. Yeah. yeah. Which which color were they? Orange. Oh, so they're the Tubulito knockoffs. Mm -hmm. Yes, they weren't even the pink tubey ones or whatever they call those. The, no, so the the pink. I think they're Ride Now right or now. Right yeah. Now. That's those it. ones are great. I've I used... just got some of those because the orange ones. As soon as I put them on, I went around the block and then like. <laughs> <laughs> But they were like four bucks a pop, right? So they, so pop. those, all the TPU ones have, like the weak point is where they bond the right. uh, the valve stem. And that's too. probably where it went. Yeah. Yep. yep. The new right nows are metal. Yeah. Yeah, they just changed up, yeah. which is really interesting. But I, I mean, granted, there was this first time I was like, I want to go in cheap and see, like, is it, to me, I didn't realize that that was the weak point. Sometimes so I, you can't afford to save that much money. <laughs> Well, you never know until you try, right? Yeah. And it's not like I, I was like burning do like three dollars, like a big deal. And yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, so wrap it up. Yeah, cool. I mean, those wheels are great. They're they're about I think they're forty depth. I think the yeah. front and rear are a little offset, but um, carbon spokes, the whole bit. They're pretty light. They're like, so yeah, I'm running uh, Victoria Corsas these days. Victoria. Victoria. Yeah. Victoria. <laughs> Victoria Corsas um, with the tan sidewall. I was always unsure if it was more um, psychological with the tan sidewall or whatever, but after I've heard other people explain it to me in certain tire brands, it matters because it's actually a different material, and that's why I always like Victoria's. Now, I don't ride them for durability. They're not the most durable tire in the world. They're actually not the worst either. Um, it's somewhere between, like, actually, I had worse, and this could be completely luck, Pro 3s. Remember those? Michelin? Michelin Pro 3s. <laughs> those were supposed to be a decent compromise, but I used to flat so much on those tires. I just, I had one set, and I constantly flatted. I'm like, I am done with these tires. Got on Vittoria's, Corsa's. I thought I'd have that same problem because they are really nice and I heard tour stories. I think I had one set where I kind of punctured a lot. And ever since then, I think I have three or four bikes I have right now that have Victoria courses on. I'm probably going to shoot myself on the foot, but I have not had I that think it has. Bug. I think it has more to do with the roads you're riding than it does the tire. Maybe. Because my, my whole thing, I always used to run the courses and everybody would be like, oh, they don't last. There's no puncture protection. Mm -hmm. And my argument was, I can change a tube and a Corsa faster than right. anything else because yeah. the, it's Something. it's just fabric sidewall. They're easy to change, and maybe I that's can, another reason I, would I like rather, them. I would rather have three flats on a Vittoria Corsa than one on a Gator. And that might be my thing is like they they're 
the convenience factor because it's like easy to change. It doesn't bother me that I have to change it as much. But if I have to get like three tire irons and yeah, yank no. on a tire and everything, Fuck and it, oh, I'm like, I think I, my full disc tire that I have on my TT back, the back wheel, whatever tire I put on, I'm sure it's the wheel itself. But it is a nightmare if I get a flat, no matter what tire is on that thing. But I think I had um, Continental TTs mm -hmm. on that. And oh my God, I, I think changing it and putting it back on, pinch flat it again with the tire irons. You know, <laughs> we were just like, oh my God, I'm gonna die, you know? Conti's typically fit tighter right. than yeah. the Vittorias did. The Vittorias are and on that wheel, borderline oh, scary horrible. how easy they go on. <laughs> yeah, almost like, is this thing gonna peel off when I corner? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and especially with Vittorias, like the the tan sign well starts to get, starts to just go hairs. and they start to like right. crackle and stuff. Anyways, I still like them though. I haven't found a better substitute. I tried Ken de Valkyries. I've tried Connie 4000s, which I ran along those. Not the best feeling tires in the world. Seem to be a good compromise of durability and feel and everything. But I, I when I got on Victoria's, I just love them. I, I just love the feel of them and everything. And they, I'm willing to put up with a little bit of inconvenience. So that's what I'm riding. Cool. And they're light. And the rolling yeah. resistance is pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, no, it's always anyways. between either the Corsa Speeds or the GP5000 TTs for the fastest tires? I have not tried those. I've heard good things, but I've also heard of people having, they're supposed to be more durable than the 4000s and everything. Everybody that I've talked to that rides 5000s and maybe it's the 5000s, not had, the TT. No, I've, I've had. Everybody nightmares. has nightmares with the 5000s. That's what maybe. Kenji told me constantly and I've never had an issue. Okay. It's like, you need to run Rubinos. And I'm like, no. Rubinos. I don't run. That's Rubinos are like Valkyries, kind of Valkyries to me. They're just like, they're he there. He also loves those tires. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love is that's a strong half, word. That's halfway to a Gator skin to me. No, not even. Gator skins are freaking rocks. I cannot feel anything. They're no. so bad to me. I don't know how people, put, I get it. Like they're durable as hell and everything. But when people say they feel pretty good, no, they don't. They feel like absolute garbage. Again. You might as well run a solid rubber tire on Tannis your tire. tire insert. But that's faster, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's more efficient. Oh. Uh, we should just run five PSI because that's the most efficient. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. totally. I ride around on flats. And run 40. I like that gooey feel. Totally. Like, wow, wow. That's more efficient. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Feel all the wobbles. With that, we're wrapped up. The science is still out, I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, shut the fuck up, RJ. Next time on Carl's Flat Earth. So like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> okay, Perry Rube. Anyways, <laughs> next time. We'll talk to you guys later. We're out.